Hello! It's October 2019 and I'm in the classic British seaside town of Margate. And when I say classic British seaside town, I mean it's basically been neglected since the 1970s when package holidays became a thing and the Brits discovered a place called Spain. But more recently, Margate has started to reinvent itself as a kind of unusual arty alternative destination. And today we're going to see something very unusual and very arty. Something no one has ever been able to explain. And I'm not even talking about how you can double the price of secondhand clothing by calling it vintage. I'm talking about this sleepy suburban side street. And more specifically, what they found underneath it. The story goes like this. One day in 1835, some kids were playing in a backyard on this road when they dislodged a stone and found a weird hole in the ground beneath. Alternatively, the story goes that there was some construction going on and they discovered a hole when a workman accidentally dropped his trowel down it. Basically, the details of the story are hazy, but the one thing that everyone can agree on is that in 1835, a hole was discovered in a backyard here. And of course, people immediately wanted to know what was down there, but the hole was too small for an adult human. Luckily though, health and safety hadn't been invented yet, so they simply dropped a schoolboy into it. And what he found was astonishing. The patterned walls and ceilings of this underground chamber are made from four and a half million seashells. Each one of them has been fixed to the panels individually and by someone. Originally, they would have been much brighter and more colourful, but after several decades of exposure to moisture, dirt and the old gas lights that used to illuminate the place, they've turned a sort of ghostly grey. But the effect is still hugely impressive, with shells covering every centimetre of available space, from the rotunda at one end, into a central meeting point, and then down through this snaking passageway into what they call the altar room. It's an incredible piece of work that must have taken someone a huge amount of time and a huge amount of effort. And yet to this day, no one knows who built it, when they built it, or why they built it. We're now inside the altar room. The wall at the far end was destroyed by a bomb during World War II, and all that's left is a photograph of what it used to look like. But apart from that, everything's intact. This is an extraordinarily well-preserved example of a... Well, what exactly was it? One popular theory is that it's what's known in architectural terms as a folly. In the 1700s, it was quite fashionable for rich landowners to commission extravagant buildings that had no use other than decoration, and showing you how incredibly rich the owner was. And if you're going to do that, then hey, why not build a mad temple out of seashells? In fact, if that is what this is, then it wouldn't be the only one. There are several other shell temples and grottos dotted around the world. But something about that explanation doesn't quite add up. Follies are usually designed to be seen. This one was hidden. Follies are usually built in the grounds of a rich landowner's estate. This was just underneath a backyard that was previously part of a farmer's field. And perhaps most importantly, if something like this was built in the 1700s, how had it been completely forgotten by 1835? Perhaps then this place goes back deeper in time. Perhaps it has some ancient religious significance. It could have been a place of secretive worship, a hidden temple. We can only speculate. And believe me, they don't mind a bit of speculation around here. Maybe it was built by the ancient Greeks. Maybe it's typically Phoenician. Or maybe these particular patterns could only possibly have been made by the Mexican civilization from 12,000 years ago. Well, if we've got any Phoenician viewers out there, please let us all know in the comments. But the rest of you are probably thinking, why don't they just use carbon dating? Well, they could. However, and I quote the website, we have been advised by experts in this field that we would need to provide a number of samples and the cost is high. Right now, there are pressing conservation priorities. Or in other words, if we lose the mystery, we'll lose the tourists. And we're not idiots. If you'd like to visit the Margate Shell Grotto, it's on Grotto Hill and it's a well signposted 10 minute walk from the centre of town. An adult ticket costs £4.50 or you can take the whole family for a tenner. 
Unfortunately, due to being a centuries old underground shell temple, the grotto is not hugely accessible to anyone in a wheelchair. Margate itself is on the North Kent coast about an hour and a half from London, and once you finish with the grotto there's plenty of other seasidey stuff to do here, but on a day like today, why not just come down to the beach and relax on these beautiful golden sands? And if you said because it's October, then yes, that was the correct answer.